As a venture capital investor, uh, we were just talking backstage, uh, I, I think one of, the, one of the categories, especially as an investor in healthcare information technology, one of the categories that's bedeviled me throughout my 22-year career, I think, is data and analytics for, for healthcare. So uh, uh, we, we just we, we had an eight or nine-year investment in a company called CodeWrite, which was natural language processing for decision support for coders, and a big, uh, a big corollary opportunity for them was using, aiming their uh, natural language engine at big pools of unstructured data like physician notes and other things. And frustrated, frustrated me to no end that we couldn't find customers for that, in, especially in an age when people are grappling with uh, uh, EMR adoption and the interface of, between the uh, EMR and the, and the physician. It seemed like a logical step. Uh, uh, in addition, I'm, I'm reminded as I uh, uh, think, think about uh, introducing Vinay, um, the, I have a conversation I had a couple of weeks ago with the chief administrative officer and the chief information officer at a big health system in North Philadelphia. And you know, when I talked to these guys about uh, their needs, and they got, we got on the topic of analytics, and one of them said, "Yeah, I've got a you know I've got a huge interest in in." In, in making an investment in this area. And I said, well, what are, give me an example of some of the use cases. What are the applications? And he said, well, you know, uh, 18 months ago, uh, I didn't employ any docs. Today, I, I employ 2,000. I'd really like to know who are they referring to, or are they were, you know, what patients are they referring to me, which are the good ones, which are the bad ones, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it did give me some hope that, well, my goodness, maybe, maybe the time has finally arrived. The guys from Cirrus uh, absolutely uh, uh, believe that it has. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Vinay Mota, uh, who will give you a sense of uh, what they're doing. Great. Great. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, thank you all for coming today. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned, uh, my name is Vinay Seth Mota. I'm the CTO over at Kairos. And um, at Kairos, um, you know, what we're really focused on, um, we think there's, uh, there's uh, two, key, uh, two key attributes that will help us solve a lot of problems in healthcare. One is focused on physicians. Uh, we think they are really key to our entire healthcare system. And we're focused on the data around physicians, understanding physician behavior, um, understanding, uh, you know, more about physicians. And so, we spent a lot of time uh, aggregating that data. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, what kind of data we're working with and so forth. But then I'm also going to tell you two stories. Uh, I'm going to tell you two stories of fictional physicians in very real situations um, and uh, how uh, both data and regulation uh, come to play in those two scenarios. Um, so, you know, we, we, we all are here because of big data in healthcare. And, uh, you know, at least in the last couple of years, you've heard lots of talk about the petabytes of data in, in healthcare. And what we found is, you know, yes, there are petabytes, but a lot of that is imaging related MRIs, CAT scans, new imaging technologies coming out. Um, and as well, you know, the other, the other part that you hear a lot about is uh, genomic data. If we were all to sequence our DNA and there'd be lots of versions of it and lots of data about proteins and all of these things, there'd be terabytes and, and petabytes of data. Uh, but this is not the data that we're focused on. Um, we're actually focused on hospitals and health systems, again, where physicians practice on a day-to-day -day basis. And the type of data that we're really interested in is the operational data. Um, you know, we've heard our customers tell us, we've uh, looked at some of the research out there, that there's on the order of 200 data silos in, in, in a typical hospital. Hospital. And, um, you know, these are the systems that you've heard of and probably don't love. Um, it's the ERP systems. It's, uh, you know, smaller systems that capture disclosures from physicians, for example, in compliance. Um, it's the EMR system, probably the largest area of investment for, uh, for uh, uh, an organization like a hospital. Uh, but, you know, um, bottom line, there's, there's a, a ton of these kinds of systems. And now, um, you know, what's happened, again, with the work uh, primarily of, of uh, the folks here um, is that, the world is, is also able to look in at uh, hospitals, um, health systems, look at the operations, look at physicians. Um, and um, you know, there's a real push for uh, both more transparency, uh, but also there's enough data now that uh, people on the outside can look in at what's going on inside a hospital. Uh, so here you have the linked data graph as the background, but you can see, you know, practically speaking, it completely dwarfs uh, you know, the, the, the data that's available purely inside a, a particular organization. And this data is very very heterogeneous, as you might expect by the nature of uh, linked data. But also, again, if you think about operations, right, we have claims data, we have professional activity data, you have disciplinary data, there's uh, legal records potentially, there's doctors moving in and out of systems and learning more about them. And so, um, and of course, with this external data comes more scrutiny. Um, 
again, there is, um, you know, there's a real opportunity for transparency, but, um, you know, as health systems are slowly adapting to the new reality, you know, some of them have ended up in newspapers and, uh, you know, are thinking more about compliance and risk management. Um, and so what I'm going to, um, you know, do today is, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we gather a lot of data about physicians and there's a lot of potential use cases we can talk about, but I'm going to focus on a couple of stories uh, and, and walk through them with you. Uh, and there are about, you know, two different physicians. So our first fictional physician is Christina Thompson, very accomplished physician, went to Yale for medical school, uh, went to a prestigious residency program at UCSF, and is now an attending at uh, Acme University down the street here. Um, Christina has been, as I mentioned, very successful. And um, you know, recently one of her colleagues came to her and said, uh, Christina, we're thinking about starting a new radiology uh, organization and you're here, would you like to be an investor? And you know, she thought about it and she said, you know, yeah, my, my patients really have had a hard time getting in at radiology uh, facilities that are convenient to them. Um, there are a lot of new technologies coming out around radiology and imaging. I think this would be a good investment. And so she goes ahead and invests in this facility. Right, and uh, you know we'll, we'll call it Roadrunner Radiology for the purposes of our uh, our example. Um, and so, if you take a step back and look at the scenario, right, you have Acme Medical Center that Christine is affiliated with. Um, you have her as a physician, and uh, you know clearly has she has a financial interest in uh, the functioning of uh, of this radiology operation. Um, now, you know, one possibility is Christina may refer her own patients there. Clearly there's concern about things like overutilization in that scenario. Uh, but there's also the case that uh, Christina may recognize that inherent conflict and may not refer her patients there, uh, but other doctors at the facility might. And so again, clearly, you know, potential area of concern. And this is something that we as a society have recognized and, um, you know, enshrined in law. There's a whole body of law that's been around for about two decades now called Stark Law. And, um, you know, lest you think this is some esoteric area of uh, the legal code, um, you know, I'm here to tell you a single healthcare system has been fined tens of millions of dollars um, in the last few years for their Stark violation. So, so very real concerns. Um, going all the way up to CEOs of organizations um, around how to make sure that they're doing the right thing. And, you know, again, primarily focused on this area of physicians, um, you know, their interests outside of the organization. And, you know, again, if we take a step back, you know, here's a visualization depicting um, sort of uh, referrals and, and dollars flowing out of a hospital, um, you know, where a single physician might be interacting with tons of vendors in a given year. Um, we actually have a, a, a group that we're working with that deal with over 10,000 vendors in a single year. So now imagine you have hundreds of doctors having, you know, uh, literally millions of interactions in a year. And there's no way you're going to keep on top of this by hiring more analysts, uh, you know, hiring more lawyers to, to look at all the transactions going on. And so that's really, uh, you know, again, where, where we focused is starting to bring together both publicly available data and uh, data inside an organization to help people solve a, a compelling problem. So here we brought together data from Secretary of State. They have uh, a list of all the uh, corporations in a state. Uh, it usually tells you all the directors of the corporation owners. Uh, payroll data from the hospital, employee list, any disclosures that, for example, Christina may have disclosed her interest. Uh, and then um, you know, also some type of service contracts that might mitigate some of the risk associated with these conflicts. Um, pull all of that together with a bunch of magic. Where, again, we have a lot of aggregated data that helps us actually do this integration very easily. Uh, uh, we have a lot of algorithms that, that help uh, disambiguate information um, and, uh, you know, then deploy that solution to help people manage, uh, manage their risk, uh, you know, whether it's through analytic products, whether it's through analytic reports or uh, applications of different forms. Um, so that's one story. I'm going to switch gears a little bit, still continue to talk about conflicts of interest, but talk about another area that is uh, much, uh, quote unquote, younger uh, in its genesis, uh, industry engagement, so physician industry interactions. Um, you know, about five years ago, uh, you start to have the first of the public disclosures, and today, uh, and if you can go, for example, to Pfizer's website and see how much money Pfizer paid to take your uh, physician out to dinner last year, right? And, um, you know, this is something that is going to uh, be, be uh, on a much larger scale within a couple of years with the Physician Payment Sunshine Act, which is going to require, um, you know, several thousand uh, both pharmaceutical and medical device manufacturers to disclose every, um, every, every dollar that uh, is going to physicians. And so here, you know, we're again going to go back to a, a, a fictional physician down the hall from Christina, uh, Dr. Martin Parker. He's an expert in congenital heart defects, written a lot of papers. Um, and 
You know, clearly someone that, uh, uh, you know, if you're doing a clinical trial, if you're exploring uh, potential therapeutics in this area, you'd want to be uh, talking to him. So again, now instead of money going out of the hospital, um, we have a visualization here depicting money going into a hospital, into physicians within the hospital, where again, potentially there might be uh, areas of risk when you have thousands of these payments uh, coming in. And um, you know, if we look at, uh, look at the data uh, that is coming into play here, there'd be probably some unexpected sets of data. We're pulling in uh, a lot of the professional activities data that you guys have uh, heard a lot about, I'm sure, with PubMed and clinical trials, for example. Um, this would tell us things like, is someone really an expert? Do they really, uh, quote unquote, deserve to, to be someone who's compensated? Um, there's a lot of the public uh, disclosures. Uh, I mentioned Pfizer as a specific example. There's a lot of companies that are now disclosing this information already, uh, self-reported disclosures. Um, and then, um, you know, a, an area that really is the largest area of concern, which is, 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 is this flow of money affecting patient care? I mean, ultimately, that's what most people care, uh, care about and are concerned about. And so that's where we start to get into utilization management and starting to pull data together to see how, um, you know, that money may be affecting potentially people going off formulary or not, uh, and, and so on. And so again, you know, we pull these disparate sources of data together, both internal and, uh, and public, and then, um, you know, del deliver uh, specific applications and reports to our customers. So I'm going to quickly uh, you know, just click over to an example of a, uh, a report. So we've anonymized the data here. Uh, this is an example of a dashboard type view that you might have. Um, you can see along the top is an, uh, is an overview of, uh, of a particular facility with about 1,700 physicians, fairly prolific, lots of publications and grants. Um, and then along the middle here, uh, you see more information about industry interactions. And uh, from here, from this dashboard view, I can click over uh, you know, the, the use cases for a physician um, administrator or a compliance officer um, to actually log in to uh, the Kairos application. Um, and uh, you know, now we're looking at a set of 635 doctors at this particular facility who have industry relationships. And um, you, know, you might start to ask questions like, uh, who are potentially my risky doctors, for example? And uh, thinking about uh, you know, the, the point I made earlier about expertise uh, being proxied with things like publications, uh, we might look for folks who don't have too many publications and uh, still do have uh, a lot of industry interactions. Uh, so as an example, example here, um, I was looking through this earlier, um, there was somebody here. Uh, so here's someone with 19 interactions, for example, and no publications. So you might ask, you know, is this someone that I should be concerned about as a potential uh, area of exposure? Um, so, uh, you know, th those, are, those are a couple of examples. And, um, you know, what I'd, uh, I'd like to summarize with is that, uh, you know, given the large transformation of data and the requirements of transparency uh, that we've had over the last couple of years, um, the compliance landscape is, is going to be entirely different over the next five years. You'll not be able to solve these problems the way you have been trying to solve them before. And, um, and frankly, you know, data-driven uh, solutions, data-driven analytics, um, and, and all the context that they provide, you know, uh, oftentimes these things are not real issues. You just need context. Um, those are, uh, the only way to do those is through some kind of technology oriented platform. Um, and then, of course, you know, there are uh, a lot of different uh, problems, uh, even around compliance and risk management that organizations are, are, are trying to address. Um, last point I'll make, uh, you know, as I mentioned in my uh, initial uh, introduction, uh, we are focused on physician data. And one of the things that's happened very naturally in the process of working with health systems is actually, uh, you know, figuratively uh, having our customers, quote unquote, walk us down the hall to Joe in procurement or Mary in credentialing, where uh, pretty much every part of the hospital is, uh, is, is really interested in physician data and, and using uh, physician information to, uh, to optimize their operations. Um, so, you know, we're doing a lot more in this area, continuing to explore the market. And, um, you know, I hope to be here a year from now and tell you about some of the latest and greatest things that we're learning. Um, I'd love to take any questions. I'm happy to uh, take them offline as well, or you can drop me a line. Uh, my first name, Akiris, as well. Thank you. Thanks very much.